Hey everyone, I'm Josh O'Brien, the National Sales Manager for Yieldmaster Solutions. And today I'm excited to welcome you to our product training for one of our newer products called NutriQuire. So throughout the training today, we're gonna to talk about how NutriQuire works, what some of the key benefits of this product are, how it applies to multiple crops, and we're gonna finish up with the trial data from our 2022 proof of concept trials. So let's just start at the basics. What is NutriQuire? Well, it's a microbial based product intended to increase the active biomass in the soil. It introduces specialized microbes into the soil, resulting in improved plant vigor, improved nutrient cycling, and improved carbon cycling. NutriQuire bacteria have the ability of unlocking tied up phosphorus and potassium from the soil, ultimately making them more available for plant uptake. And it also has the ability of converting applied synthetic fertilizer to more plant available forms quicker, resulting in improved nutrient efficiencies. So let's look at where we where we see success the most with NutriQuire, and we're going to look at our acre matchmaker for this product. Um, higher low pH soils is a really, really nice situation for this product, and we're going to go through these one by one throughout the presentation here on just why we like these um, these situations. If you have the ability of applying it with fertilizer, that's also a really nice situation. Late foliar application, um, we would prefer you to get it down a little bit earlier, but we're certainly still okay with going in a little bit later on in the crop cycle, um, even all the way up to fungicide application. Heavy manure ground, um, again, we're gonna go through some slides here in just a little bit, explaining why we really like it on swine manure ground, dairy, uh, or litter, really all three. If you have sandy soils or lower CEC soils, uh, this is a great fit uh, in that situation as well. But first, let's just take a couple minutes to talk about the difference between this product and some of our live bacteria products. So we are a soil based product with this product. We're not endophytic. We're not living in the plant. So it's important for us to make sure that we have the ability of surviving in the soil where there's so much chaos already happening with uh, all the different levels of bacteria and microbes that are in those soils today. So let's take a look at the difference between live bacteria products and spore forming bacteria products, which is what NutriQuire is. So live bacteria products, you would apply them to the soil. When that bacteria experiences stresses such as extreme heat, uh, drought, or even chemical stress, those live bacteria die and your populations uh, that you applied start to diminish. With spore forming bacteria, it's a little bit different. So we're gonna apply the bacteria to the soil. These bacteria will produce spores or almost little, almost like little eggs. Uh, these bacteria will, uh, will still go through the stresses such as extreme heat, drought, and chemical, and the live bacteria will die off to a certain point. But what's really cool about this is that those spores that the bacteria have laid, when those conditions become favorable again, all of a sudden they'll hatch and become alive and active again. And now you're restarting the whole cycle over again. So as we look at um, applying this product to the soil, uh, it's a very vigorous type of a product that's going to be able to survive in some extremely harsh conditions and continue to thrive under those conditions, which is really cool. One of the really um, nice things about utilizing NutriQuire is not only are we getting the benefit of what's happening in the soil below ground, but when we apply it with fertilizer, we're going to get the ability of utilizing this product as a catalyst for that fertilizer. So what we mean by that is, you know, typically when you would apply most uh, N, P, and K, that product is not in a plant usable form, right? So much of the conversion uh, that has to happen for it to become plant available happens through bacteria or microbes in the soil, um, converting it to a different form that is then uh, able to be taken up by the plant. The NutriQuire bacteria have the ability of accelerating that conversion process for NP and K and, and making it into that plant usable form a lot quicker. So as we think about um, you know, cold, wet soils and, and what that means for phosphorus and how critical phosphorus is early on in the season for germination and early plant vigor, uh, being able to convert that phos in your starter to more usable forms quicker and allow the plant to utilize it quicker um, is, is a huge benefit. And uh, obviously the last part about that is just 
not losing it to environmental factors. So we talked about re the fact that we really like this product on the sandier, lower CEC soils. Part of that reason is because if we can convert that nutrient to usable forms quicker, uh, we're, we're allowing less of that nutrient to run off uh, through leaching or other environmental factors that, that may potentially cost you money. One other really neat thing about the product is its ability to, uh, to have what we call competitive exclusion. So if you're not familiar with competitive exclusion, it's essentially um, kind of the, th the, the rule that two species competing for the same resource cannot coexist. So when I think about this, I think of kind of two distinct buckets um, of competitive exclusion. The first one being a food source and the second one being the real estate. So as we look at the food source side of it, if we have multiple bacteria or multiple strains of bacteria in a concentrated area, let's look at the, the furrow of the, of, the, um, of the acre, for example, um, there's going to be beneficial bacteria and there's going to be negative bacteria both competing for the same food source. If we can put down a lot more of the beneficial bacteria that have the ability of consuming that food source or out competing the negative bacteria for that food source, in theory, we can keep the numbers in check of that negative bacteria or even starve them out of that situation, um, which is really gonna help particularly early on in the season uh, during that early stage of plant growth. The second, part of uh, the competitive exclusion that I like to think about is just the real estate side of it, right? So as you look at uh, the uh, the graphic we have on the right-hand side of the screen here, you can see all the yellow birds are taking up the branches there. Then the red birds come along and they kick the yellow birds out and now they own the branches and they're taking it. And uh, very similar things happen below ground uh, when we're colonizing root systems, right? So we have beneficial bacteria and we have negative bacteria that are both trying to colonize a root system. If we can get our beneficial bacteria to colonize that root system uh, quicker and faster and more aggressively than the negative bacteria will, will do it, now we can own that real estate and we can help prevent some of those uh, issues that come with the negative bacteria uh, colonizing or living on, on the root system of that plant. This slide's kind of it's kind of shocking, actually. I um, did some homework into just what the phosphorus efficiency is in year one, meaning if we apply 100% phosphorus year one, what percentage of that phosphorus is actually utilized by the plant in year one? And uh, we're going to spin the wheel here in just a second, but I want you to to kind of think to yourself and take a guess on what that number might be. But let's go ahead and spin the wheel. So 30% is the answer. So 30% of the phosphorus that we apply is actually being utilized by the crop in the first year, which is a staggering, staggeringly low number, right? I don't think farmers would be thrilled to, to know that 70% um, of the cost uh, of the fertilizer they put down for phosphorus is not actually being utilized by the plant. The other hard part about this is a lot of times when we see phosphorus deficiencies, we think, well, why don't we just put more phosphorus down? Well, that's the simple answer, but the more complex part of that is putting more phosphorus down doesn't mean you're making more phosphorus available to the crop. And what NutriQuire is doing, it's giving you the ability to convert or unlock that phosphorus and make it more plant available, allowing that crop to utilize it and ultimately increasing the yields. So let's talk a little bit about just how we do that, right? Up in the acre matchmaker, we talked about lower and higher pH soils being a really nice fit for the product. Um, and, and we're gonna go through just why that is. So on the left-hand side of this uh, graphic here, you can see this would be our lower pH situation. And on the right-hand side of the graphic, you can see would be more of our higher pH situation. So on the lower pH situation, uh, we have phosphorus here. And as it moves, it wants to bind to a metal. It wants to bind to either iron or aluminum or some other metal in the soil that typically is there in your lower pH soils. On your higher pH situation, that phosphorus wants to bind to a calcium and potentially maybe even a zinc, which is fairly common in some of the higher pH soils as well. But ultimately, uh, the impact is the same. 
if it binds to a, a an iron or a calcium, uh, it's no longer plant available. It is now turned into organic phosphate and uh, can no longer be intercepted by the root system and be utilized by the crop. So it is we've taken that phosphorus um, and, and basically put it in a format that is no longer usable. And NutriQuire can really help with the situation, and it's kind of a um, you know a very rudimentary, simplistic uh, diagram here. But we're going to walk through just how NutriQuire helps with this situation. So we are going to apply uh, kind of specialized microbes and bacteria that have the ability of releasing organic acids and enzymes. And these organic acids and enzymes uh, can locally help neutralize the pH around that area where that phosphorus is locked up, whether it be locked into a metal or whether it be locked into a calcium, we can help neutralize that pH in that very specific area. And by doing that, when we get it back closer to neutral, we're breaking that bond that's holding those two elements together. So we're allowing that phosphorus to now get back into free roaming phos um, or inorganic phosphorus and allowing the plant and the root system to be able to intercept it and utilize it for plant growth, which is a really, really neat thing. Uh, one of the other areas we talked about that we really like this product is on manure ground, whether it be dairy manure, or swine manure, or even litter. Um, we know that we're, we're loading those soils with a lot of uh, nutrient, and in most cases, if it's dairy or swine, we're loading it with a lot of phosphorus, right? So a couple things happen when we do that. One, um, obviously you get a tied up phosphorus situation like we talked about in the last slide. Um, but two, you get to a situation to where that soil becomes such a hot zone of phosphorus that now you are limited on being able to put any additional uh, uh, phosphorus down into that soil. So NutriQuire can really help in both of those situations. We can help unlock that tied up phosphorus that's already in the soil make it plant available and make it usable by the crop. But we can also help take away some of those locations where FOSS wants to bind up and bond to those elements. We can take that parking spot away from that, um, from that phosphorus and make it stay in the inorganic stage, which is the plant available stage for that crop to then take it up and utilize it for plant growth. So ultimately we can help not only reverse the trend of your heavy phosphorus soils, but we can prevent them from getting to that heavy phos loaded soil to start with. So now that we've talked about just how the product works, let's talk a little bit about how to apply it. And I mentioned earlier on in the presentation that one of the really cool things about this product is that it is a spore forming bacteria. Being a spore forming bacteria allows us a lot of flexibility um, with how to apply it. We have a lot of um, uh, give on putting this product with chemical, with fertilizer, with insecticide, with all types of different things that it can potentially be mixed with, and it gives us a lot of options. So pre-broadcast with the herbicide is certainly a, a great way of doing it. Again, we're looking to treat the soil more than we're looking to treat the plant with this product. In furrow, uh, this is my favorite way of applying the product. If you can apply it in furrow with a starter fertilizer, you're gonna get um, a really big bang for the buck in that situation. Not only are we going to uh, enter the furrow and have those uh, competitive exclusion benefits uh, out competing the negative bacteria for food and out competing the negative bacteria for real estate on the root system, but we're also going to convert that uh, starter fertilizer to a more usable form a lot quicker, which is critical in that early seed uh, early early plant stages. Two by two is certainly another great way of doing it. Again, uh, we're treating the acre, not the actual plant, so we don't have to necessarily make contact with the plant in order to be effective. But let's say you missed the window of uh, being able to apply it in furrow or you're not set up for in furrow. Uh, foliar is another great way of applying it. The application rate's going to stay the same in both situations. It's a 32 ounce per acre application rate. And if you go foliar with it, uh, my number one recommendation would be apply it with a fertilizer. If you're out putting nitrogen down, if you're out putting UAN 28 or 32% down, put NutriQuire with it. Again, 
being able to help convert that 28 or 32 to a plant usable form a lot quicker, we're going to get more bang for the buck out of that fertilizer when we put it down. Um, but if you can't put it with the fertilizer, herbicide is another great way of doing it. Uh, you could potentially even increase your efficiency of the herbicide by having the bacteria help uh, penetrate that herbicide into the plant a little bit more efficiently as well. And uh, fungicide, I know we're getting a little bit late in the year for fungicide timing, but it is certainly another great option and, and compatible to do uh, with the fungicide as well. Timing wise, again, because we're treating the, the uh, soil, not necessarily the plant, our window is wide open. Um, we've kind of laid out what we think is the best window here, which would be the V2 uh, up to the tassel if you're going to apply it foliar. Uh, you get much past tassel, you're starting to run out of time to really have an impact in that in that cropping season. Soybeans, again, a very similar situation. Really any crop that you put it on, whether it be corn, soybeans, alfalfa, wheat, cotton, you name it, um, the window is pretty wide open as to when we want to be applying it, but in, in general, the earlier we can get it down, the uh, the more effective the product is going to be. So now that we've talked about just how the product works and we've gone through how you actually apply the product, let's talk a little bit about our trial data from this past season. So with corn, we did have it in 10 different locations. Uh, we had a 70% win rate this year on corn, which is great. Um, Overall, we averaged just over nine bushels, 9.3 bushel per acre increase on corn. Uh, but again, if you look at the 70% win rate that we had, you know, seven out of 10 times, we were getting 14 bushel, 14.1 bushel to be exact, uh, back out of this product, which for the cost of the product is a significant ROI on corn. Soybeans, this is probably my, my favorite part of the data set, um, talking soybeans with this product, because I think it's just so impactful. We had it on seven different uh, locations here, 86% win rate on soybeans this year across the three states we had it in, uh, 3.2 bushel per acre advantage overall. But again, that 86% of the time, we're averaging almost five bushel, 4.7 bushel per acre increase. And as we think about soybeans, and we think about what they need during pod fill, potassium is one of those big needs, right? And that's really what uh, the NutriQuire did in this situation, is it really helped uh, mineralize a lot of that potassium that was locked up in the soil and made it plant available or helped make it plant available. And that really helps out, particularly in more of the dry years as well. When we start thinking about potassium deficiency in soybeans, uh, it, it gets a lot worse in dry years because it's just not being brought into the plant with the water, uh, with the moisture that it typically would be. So certainly a distinct advantage on soybeans this past season, and uh, I would expect to continue to see the same here. So I'm glad that you guys were able to join me today on this product training, and uh, thank you for your time.